Good afternoon, Patriots. This is the American Vision, broadcast on the TLB TV network and brought to you by the Liberty Beacon Project. I'm your host, Bill Muckler, broadcasting from my home studio in chilly but cloudless Cocoa, Florida. And today we're going to talk about the Nonsense Football League, and we're going to talk about some other things that are kind of little tidbits of what's going on in America today. So this show is going to be quite a bit different than what you're usually used to seeing from me. Now, you know that I'm a strong proponent of uh, not watching the Nonsense Football League games. I haven't watched the game for the last two years. And right now we're going into the playoff season. This is where they get the big bucks. So in the playoff season, we've got a couple of weeks in January where they're going to have playoff games. And then on February 4th, they're going to have the Super Bowl game broadcast on the Nonsense Broadcasting uh, <laughs> Station. I shouldn't say that. NBC, um, you know, by the Nonsense Broadcasting Company. And that's what they are. So this is a marriage between nonsense and nonsense. It's not nonsense squared. <laughs> you could, you, I can't make this up, folks. Anyway, I don't want you to watch any of these games. I, I want you to stay away from them. Don't give them the courtesy of watching these games. And I've talked to you about this before. I did a video about this before, why we shouldn't be watching these games. But today I'm going to put a little bit different spin on it because I've been analyzing this for the last two years, and I didn't want to really say a whole lot about it, about this particular thing until now. But what this is really all about is socialism. In America, 40% of the people polled prefer socialism over capitalism and democracy. And this is really all about promoting socialism. Uh, this is something about the Black Lives Matter, which is a, a subversive uh, leftist group that's sponsored by George Soros, who's a known socialist. And so everything we've heard about this all has to do with taking away our freedoms. They want to take away our rights. And they say, well, we have to protest against America because in America we have institutionalized racism and we have systemic racism and the police are trained to go out and round up young black men in the streets and gun them down. And we all know that every time we've heard about one of these stories, it's always been an unfortunate incident, but it's also been an incident when someone was trying to uh, escape from the uh, police. What's so sad about these protests are the fact that most people in America Think of this as protesting against the flag is disgraceful, protesting against the anthem is disgusting, protesting against our military is disrespectful. And yeah, all those things are true, and I'm sure all of us see it that way to some extent. But what do the players really think about this? Do they really know what they're doing? I told you about Colin Kaepernick, who started this whole thing by sitting on the bench back in August of 2016, because his girlfriend, who's a radical uh, Islamist and a Black Lives Matter proponent and wants socialism or uh, maybe jihadism in America today, wanted him to sit down and uh, in the, during the national anthem. So he, he started doing this, and so some other players thought, well, they would do this too. So now I'm going to give you another poll. 585 NFL players, 585 nonsense football league players uh, were polled. But few knew exactly what they were protesting against. And here's a sampling of this question. I'm not going to give you all 585 because you couldn't take it. You wouldn't listen to it, and the show would be too long. But the question was, what are, what are you protesting by kneeling during the national anthem? 
And so here it goes. One of them, uh, this, I'm going to give you, I guess, one of the most <laughs> intelligent one of them all first. Too many Americans are stuck on stupid. They are embarrassed by patriotism. They take freedom for granted. They lack empathy. They don't listen to each other. They think themselves superior, ascribe sinister motives, see everything in terms of race, and can't stop poisoning every aspect of our society with politics. So that's, that's one. Okay, here's another one. <laughs> I'm going to try and read these as best I can. Pretty sure it's against the Nazis, especially the white ones. <laughs> I think Hitler and the Nazis were mostly white ones, so he's got a point there. Another one is, we're protesting against America becoming capitalistic instead of equal. Well, I think we were all always capitalistic, and I think we've always been equal, but now we're becoming capitalistic instead of being equal. And then another one said, he's protesting against Trump because Trump doesn't like Black Lives Matter, okay? Now, how about we're protesting against global warming? <laughs> we're, and I'm gonna say something about that a little bit later too. So we're protesting against global warming and we're also protesting against the police. Well, I'm, I'm pretty happy with our police force. I know some of you might be able to find an instance or two where a policeman maybe was a little untoward, maybe a little bit too aggressive. Maybe they made some mistakes, but these are well-trained people. They're, you know, and we rely on them all the time. And let me tell you, even the football players rely on them if somebody's stealing their jewelry, don't they? So anyway, now here's one. You're going to love this one. I'll try and do this the best I can. We're showing the world that we care about um, such things as um, uh, freedom from suppression. Well, I guess he meant oppression, but they both words pretty much say the same thing. But anyway, I hadn't heard they. I hear them all talking about oppression, never sup suppression. And then another one said, "Me and my fellow players are protesting." The Constitution of Independence. Did you know we had a Constitution of Independence, I thought? Well, we have a Bill of Rights, and we do have a Const Const Constitution, and we did have a Declaration of Independence. But anyway, that's, that's what he's protesting against. And why is he protesting against that? Because of what it does to people of color. Got that? Oh, wow. And another one, we're protesting our right to stand up by kneeling for our beliefs. <laughs> okay, stand up for your, to kneel. Uh, okay, I got that one. And another one, this one's a little off color, send the kids out of the room. We are protesting against Trump because he, you know, keeping the black men down and shit. Whoa, pretty outspoken there. And, <laughs> Another one, myself, is kneeling to show that just because I'm American doesn't mean I have to act like one. So we're, we're, these, these are all college guys. If, you, if you're in the NFL, you have to have at least three years of college, maybe four years. And I guess I should be too critical about their grammar uh, because I guess a lot of us have a little problem with grammar. And I'll end up with one. We're kneeling in front of these statues. <laughs> I don't understand what that one was all about, but I guess they don't like all these statues that we have. So that, that's a shame. So let's change the subject a little bit. And let's talk about the fact that, hey, I, I wrote this book, you know, and I, and I tried to make it as grammatically presentable as possible. It's really a good book, and it doesn't have anything to do with uh, kneeling and, and at football games, but with the national uh, that nonsense football league. But anyway, I do want to talk about some other things. For example, one of them was about global warming, and so we have this deal where 
down there in Florida, we've had 119 hurricanes since 1850. And guess what? The last one we had, we had this year, Irma, which kind of put us out of business a little bit down here, was caused by global warming. Wow. I guess all those ones in 1850 were caused by something else. Who knows? But, you know, this is it's strange in America today. I mean, here we are. We have a, a flag and a culture that offends so many people, but our benefits don't, certainly don't so offend them. They all want our benefits. They all want to move here, but they don't like us, and they're offended by everything we do. And you know how I feel about offending. I, I, don't, I don't think we should uh, use the word offensive and offend it should be taken out of our English language. So, speaking of the English language, need now means wanting somebody else's money. And greed now means wanting to keep your own money. And guess what? The politicians all have compassion because they're arranging the transfer of our money from those who are greedy to those who are needy. So anyway, that's pretty much what we've got going on here today. All right, let's let's talk about some more things here. How about this? Most bad government has grown out of too much government. I didn't make that one up. I, I have to tell you who said that. That was a Tom Jefferson said that. And he was kind of a classical liberal, which is really different than the liberalism we have today which is really what they, what they now call progressivism and being progressive, but it's really being regressive, so it's regressivism. But anyway, the liberals of today, the regressives of today, claim they want to hear other points of view. So I'd like to give them some points of view, but unfortunately, they're shocked and offended when that somebody else has a point of view. So how can that be? Anyway, I guess we have a you know a Declaration of Independence, and I said we declared we declared the um, American spirit. We don't need to rewrite the Declaration of Independence or the uh, Constitution. What we really need to do is read it, and that's the subject of my new book, Twenty Twenty: Clear Vision for Our Future. Part one is all about our Constitution, and I'm telling you, our Constitution has never been presented in such a way as our patriots have, are uh, talking about. So it's all in dialogue form. And our patriots, and they picked up a few other uh, patriots along the way, are all about uh, telling, talking to you about the Constitution. Okay, so now we have a country where, and see if you can figure this out for me, and, and would you please send me some comments on this? and. Um, you can do it in emails, but I'd really rather you put them on my website for everybody to read them. But I want you to tell me how people can come into this country illegally and they probably wave the flag of their, their country. And I'm talking mostly about Mexico, uh, Mexico. I'm not against Mexicans. I love Mexicans. I love Mexico, but I don't like the idea that they think they can illegally cross our border. So they come across and they tell us about how great Mexico is and they want to speak Spanish, their language, and they want to wave their flag. But then when we go to, if we deport them to send them back, that's a punishment to go back to their own country that they want to wave, that they wave the flag for and tell us how great it is and everything. And here they are. And I guess you all know what's happening in America. Hillary's got a new book out. And <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just taken aback by this because I watched, I watched all this stuff and I watched all these hearings and Hillary couldn't recall anything. She didn't remember a thing. She, she, I don't recall. I don't recall. She didn't recall. The only thing she said different than that one time was, what difference does it make? But anyway, she she remembered enough to write a 512-page book. How do we, how was she able to write a 512-page book if she doesn't remember anything? She can't recall anything. But here's the kicker. 
do you want to read her book? Or wouldn't you rather read her emails that she can't remember? I think I would rather read her emails. So give me some comments on that. I'd appreciate it if you'd tell me about, you know, whether you'd read her book or rather read her emails. So here's another thing the liberals keep telling us. They've been telling us for years. They say if confiscating guns saves just one life, just one life, it's worth it to confiscate all of our guns. Now, I did a video about how our judicial system, you know, is really three different judicial systems, maybe even four, and how uh, the illegals have their own judicial system. Well, what, what about this? What if we started deporting all the illegals that commit violent crimes in America today? What if we, what if we, deported all those that, that are, have felonies and violent crimes and they use guns or and maybe they ran somebody down There's a lot of drunken driving uh, offenses where they've killed people. Well, what if we deported them? And if that just saved one life, wouldn't it be worth it? <laughs> I mean, it's the same logic. That's the problem with this, this problem with Ill progressivism or re regressivism in this liberal lifestyle is it's a mental disorder because only in America are legal, cons uh, legal citizens considered racist and Nazis, but illegal citizens are considered dreamers. What, what a farce that is. World, America's greatest nightmare is the dreamers. And it just proves progressivism is a true mental disorder. And what's it going to lead us to? Well, anybody remember Rome? Well, that was a couple thousand years ago. They, they had a pretty good thing going there. They were number one in the, in the world. Uh, kind of controlled just about everything. Huh? And, but then they didn't make it. They fell. And, what, what happened in Rome? Well, they were involved in endless wars. <laughs> a lot of wasteful spending. We all heard about that. And that unpaid debt. Government tyranny. I think we've read about that, too. Uh, they even manipulated their currency. You know, they had gold coins and gold this and that. And uh, a lot of greedy politicians. They had a Senate that was pretty uh, bad. Does that sound familiar to what's going on in America today? I've told you about America today. I did a whole story, a whole um, a video uh, segment on how America is uh, becoming dependent. We're, we're in the stage of, of dependency. So let me talk about dependency. We're dependent on the, on the Fed. We, because we owe them, um, we owe more than $20 trillion in national debt, and that's to the Fed and to the Chinese and, you know, other people too. And we're all, everybody's in debt. We're, we owe, we have car payments on our cars. We're in debt on our cars. Some of them, most of them, 72-month uh, payments. Then we have 30-year loans on our houses. We have mortgages on our houses. And we've got 30-year mortgages on student loans. It's going to take our students uh, who get these loans from the time they graduate from college until they retire to get their loans paid off. And they're always trying to figure out how to uh, manipulate their interest rates and uh, the loans get passed off from one to another. So how can the federal government expect citizens to pay their loans off <laughs> and yet we give illegal aliens a free education. I'm not making this stuff up, folks. You got to listen to me. You got to believe it because this is what's happening in America today. And so you're saying, what do I really want you to do? Well, here's what I want you to do. I want you to write comments. And I want you to comment on what I've been saying and pick out a few things and give me a comment so others can read what you're thinking about. So these, these silly polls of 585 nonsense football league players are 40% of the uh, 
people in America prefer socialism. Let's hear what you have to say about what you think of America. And so I'm going to ask you to do that. And then I'm also going to ask you, uh, I want you to read my book. So we you know, read the book and get the book and uh, read my newsletters and uh, watch my videos and uh, read my articles and everything and go to my webpage. Hey, I, I appreciate everybody going to my webpage. I had over 50,000 uh, views this year. I'm going to get 100,000 in 2018. I've got uh, more than 1,000 uh, more uh, subscribers to my newsletter. Uh, things are really looking good. Uh, share this with everybody. Just share it. You know, you send out all this crap. But I get, you know, I get a, a two to 300 emails a day and about 200 of them are crap that you, that you send out to everybody. How about, how about sharing my, my stuff and then send it out and, and help me get more subscribers. Tell your your family and friends and all the people on your address list and Facebook and social media, Twitter, whatever it is, LinkedIn. Hey, sign up for Bill's newsletter so you can get to see these, uh, these uh, videos and uh, read all of his stuff. And then the last thing I'm going to ask you to do is do not watch any football games the next two Sundays in January. And please do not watch the Super Bowl game this year. Don't watch those stupid commercials. And if, if you're invited to a stu Super Bowl party, decline it. And for those who want to have a party that day, have a, a non-Super Bowl party and don't watch football and do something good. You know, uh, you can, you'd be surprised all the fun things you can do at a party without watching a nonsense football league game. And usually the games are pretty crappy anyway. There's hardly ever any good ones. And I, I've watched them all up until the last two years, but I ain't watching now. So anyway, please do not watch any more football games. Honor your country. Honor your American spirit. Honor your flag, your anthem, and your veterans. And realize what's really happening here. It's all a, it's all a fraud. There is no such thing as systemic and uh, institutional racism and oppression of uh, minorities in America today. Most of the Americans I know, and especially those who are watching this, I know you're all good people and you're not that way. So I'll finish this off by saying where there is no vision, the people perish. Where Americans have no vision, Americans will perish. And God bless you all. I want to wish everyone a very safe and prosperous and blessed and happy 2018. And God save our America. We need you now more than ever before.